Hey, good morning to you. I gotta get out early before it gets too hot. Can I give you a little update? We're having a good time here in Wilmington, North Carolina. Been visiting with the family and the friends. It's been a lot of fun. I'm getting current with my, my pilot's license, doing some flying. Also, lots and lots of boat projects. Making some big changes on Clarity. Uh, we're getting rid of our wind generator. Uh, we're gonna talk about that and also in this video, I wanna share with you some of the uh, tips that I use or some of the guidelines I use for when to buy new gear and when to buy used gear. There's some stuff you wanna buy new, some stuff you can save some money with by buying used, but uh, I've got some definite opinions on that, so stay tuned for that coming up. We're getting rid of the wind generator for basically two reasons. Uh, first of all, since we started doing all this YouTube stuff, I've become much more tuned in to just how noisy the wind generator is. And also, it's become pretty clear that it's difficult to mount a wind generator on a catamaran like ours. You really have to mount it up high, otherwise you're going to get disturbance in the wind flow across the cabin top and into the wind generator and the current's going to fluctuate a lot more. These really belong on monohulls, but they do work as advertised. Aside from being relatively quiet compared to the other wind generators that we've heard on other boats, the performance figures as advertised by Eclectic Energy I think are pretty much spot on. You start to make some amps at about 8 to 10 knots and by the time you get up to let's say 18 knots or so you're making a consistent 10 amps of power. You bring that up to 20 knots and you're easily getting 12 to 14 and even 15 amps. If you've got a good blow going on and a consistent 25 knots of wind, this wind generator is consistently putting out 22, 23, 24, even 25 amps. So in terms of the power output, this thing works as advertised. In fact, this video is brought to you by our D400 wind generator. If you're interested in buying this from me, just contact me through our Sail Clarity website and uh, let's make a deal. So if you're thinking about purchasing this fine second hand, actually it's third hand now, used wind generator from me, brings up a question. When should you buy new and when should you buy used? There's some things I will only buy new and some things I can really save a lot of money on by buying used. I've also got a decision to make for myself today about what I do about the shore power cable I need. This boat, our boat, comes with two 30 amp shore power cords. What's really common though, since we need these big slips to accommodate clarity, is that the big slips have 50 amp power. So what you need is this thing right here. This little pigtail thing takes the two 30 amp cords and combines them into the 50 amp cord. Port City Marina here was really kind when we rolled into town to lend us uh, one of theirs. But they said you can only have it for a couple weeks, you gotta go get your own. So that's what we're on a mission to do today. And as a frugal boat owner, always trying to save some money where we can, the question is, do we buy a new shore power cord converter or do we go with the used one, which is less expensive, but it's gonna take some time and energy to acquire. Hopefully we'll learn a little lesson here today. And it's a lesson I think we can apply to a lot of things in the boating world. So come along. All right, so I am now on my way to go buy a shore power cord, converter cord, used that I found off Facebook Marketplace. So what's my criteria? When do I decide it's okay to be frugal? Well, the first thing I do is I value my time. And right now, I value my time at $100 per hour. I can kind of hear you saying, oh yeah, 100 bucks an hour. Yeah, you think pretty high of yourself, don't you, Nick? 
Uh, here's the deal. The reason why I set it at $100 an hour for my time is that no matter what I do, I always underestimate how much time and energy and sometimes money it takes to fix something that I, I used. So by saying that my time's worth 100 bucks, I won't feel quite so bad when I've got twice as much time invested as I thought I was going to. It seems like it's always the case. I'm just always optimistic. All right, I'm at the main hospital entrance here in Olivia, North Carolina. And how are you gonna haggle with somebody when you're meeting them at a hospital because they're there for a doctor's appointment? How am I gonna haggle with them? Of course I can't haggle with them. So that was quick and painless. Uh, got the short power cord, it's all good. It's corrosion free, it looks like it's brand new, hardly ever been used. And going through my own criteria, uh, 90 bucks for the shore power cord probably spent 12 bucks in gas 102 and it's taken me about an hour of my time or it's gonna take about an hour of my time so you value that at 100 I'm at 202 dollars so not a huge tremendous savings uh, but we're talking about a day where I didn't really have a lot going on so driving down to meet somebody to buy the shore power cord for less than half price pretty much as good as new I'll do that no problem all right let's start with my list of things that I never buy used and mostly this is because I have learned some lessons over the years first thing I never buy used is electronic devices uh, chart plotters autopilots anything that's just electronic I buy new there's a couple reasons for that First of all, you're buying old tech. Newer models, newer generation stuff is so much better from Wi-Fi connections to just resolutions of radars. It's better to buy new. The other problem with buying used is getting service or parts for older stuff. A lot of the parts can cost almost as much as a whole new unit. So electronics, I never buy used. This one is probably obvious. I don't ever buy paint, adhesives, sealants, caulks, anything sticky. I never buy that used because most of that stuff that's solvent based in one way or another, it has an expiration date. And uh, even if it's within the expiration date, if you're buying it used, you don't know how it was stored. It could have been stored in a warm spot and it may not be any good. It may come out of the gun looking pretty good, but it may never cure or it may cure too fast. So I never do anything sticky used. I never buy batteries used. Sometimes you can get a deal on older lithium batteries or somebody's swapping out their AGMs for lithiums and you can get their AGMs for cheap, but you don't know how those batteries were treated. You don't know how much life is left and so you just don't know how much the batteries are actually worth. Never buy batteries used. Wire. Don't buy wire used because you can't really tell the quality of the copper inside just by how the ends look. Uh, older wire that's been used can have moisture intrusion and it can actually be corroded midway down the wire. It could be a little pinhole in the covering, uh, the insulation there. This one might be a little bit debatable. We've gone both ways on this. Never buy used safety equipment. We've purchased a used life wrap before that actually came with paperwork. The paperwork, as it turns out, didn't actually match the raft. So when it looked like it had been repacked recently, we don't know exactly if that repacking was for that raft or a different raft. Life rafts, man overboard stuff, e -perbs, better to just buy new. Four stroke outboards. I would never purchase a used four stroke outboard unless it was from a friend of mine. The new high tech four strokes are pretty complex. They've got electronic ignition, there's sophisticated circuitry in there, and also it takes some technical expertise to work on these. So buying a used outboard 
If it's a two-stroke, could be different, but a four-stroke, I would never touch that. You can save quite a bit of money by buying some things used, but it really depends on what it is. Here's a list of things that I think you can fairly safely buy on the used market, save some money, and you get the exact same functionality as buying new. The first would be a dinghy, uh, an inflatable dinghy. Most of the time, you can see if it's holding air. You can do a test with soapy water to see if it's got any leaks and you can save significantly. A new dinghy for our boat, depending on what material you get, is between $5,000 and $6,500. You can buy the same dinghy that's been used for a couple seasons and put into storage, maybe the owner sold the boat or something like that. You can buy that same dinghy for about $2,000 and it can be in perfectly serviceable shape. But I would stay away from used mainsails and most jibs. You can buy and save quite a bit of money on used downwind sails like a drifter or an asymmetrical spinnaker or a symmetrical spinnaker. New, these can cost upwards of five, six thousand dollars. On the used market, you can pick the same one up for maybe fifteen hundred bucks. Deck hardware. Deck hardware is where you can save a lot of money. Blocks, uh, travelers, even winches sometimes you can find at a huge, huge discount. Blocks for a boat like ours, uh, between $180 and $300, depending on what it is. And you can buy blocks like these used from uh, Swap Meat or a, a used gear chandlery for maybe 30 to 50 bucks a piece. Fishing gear. Now, fishing gear can be a huge savings. You walk into any fishing place and you're just astounded by how much some of these lures cost. You know, 15, 18, 30, 50 dollars for one lure. Uh, estate sales, garage sales, where I've probably purchased $500 worth of tackle for, you know, 30, 40 dollars. Fishing gear you can buy used and save a lot of money. And the same goes for water toys. New paddle boards, depending on the quality, can cost anywhere between $700 and $2,000. Things like this you can find on Craigslist for a couple hundred dollars. Outboards. Now, as I talked about, I would not touch a used four-stroke outboard, but a used two-stroke outboard, depending on the brand, like if it's a Yamaha, you can buy these for less than half of new. And as long as they're taken care of and serviced, you'll get a lot more life out of them. Most people shy away from used ropes. Now, I really just reserve this for two types of rope. One is Dyneema. Dyneema usually holds up pretty well, and if it doesn't have any abrasion, which is pretty easy to see, it's gonna be serviceable for a long, long time. Also, three-strand rope. This is the sort of stuff that you're gonna pay a couple dollars a foot for in your chandlery used for mooring lines, stuff like that. And you're going to be able to pick this up for almost nothing. People sell their boats, the mooring lines end up in a locker somewhere. It's still perfectly good 10 or 15 years later. Of course there's a huge gray area when buying used stuff. Uh, stuff like solar and the wind generators and water makers. These do have electronic components or electrical components but they're pretty easy to demonstrate. With a used water maker, you are gonna be putting your faith in the seller to some extent. But a lot of these water makers are very component driven. So it's not that hard to troubleshoot a problem with a water maker. A wind generator, it's either gonna work or it's not gonna work. And the same goes for solar. And you can save 40, 50, maybe even 80% off the cost of new. Hey, thanks for watching everybody. Really appreciate it. Really appreciate the likes and the comments and of course the subscriptions too. It's really fun having this two-way interaction with you. I think it was Benjamin Franklin or somebody really smart who said the bitterness of buying low quality lasts a lot longer than the sweetness of low price. And that is so unbelievably true when it comes to this boating stuff. You can try and cut corners by buying stuff that looks like it's a really good deal. But if you buy wrong, you're just going to cause a lot more headaches for yourself. So use my tips as a guide and, and maybe you'll get in for a little less than you otherwise would.
Stay tuned. Got more coming up next week. Got some fun stuff planned for you. Take care.